Hello makers, so it's really cold today. Um, I'm doing a lot of printing. I, I'm doing this purge bucket experiment thing. I have printers going on, prototyping, designing, and getting great results. You'll get to know more about those in a few days. But in the meantime, I want to do an episode which I've never done before, and I really wanted to do for quite some time now, and I figured I'm gonna give it a try, and you guys let me know how this goes. So as you can probably imagine, I have a lot of friends who got into 3D printing now, and they ask me for suggestions, which printer to buy, and I've had a couple of friends who uh, who wanted a printer, they didn't want to spend a lot of money, and I asked them to get the Ender 3. Um, whatever they need, I can help them. And one of those friends sent me a couple of photos, because he was having an issue. Now. The, the first photo was a perfectly done print. It was absolutely flawless, it was beautiful. The next print showed a lot of under extrusion. And th the first thing that comes to my mind is there is a clog. Now he made it absolutely clear that he did not change any settings whatsoever in Quora. So that ruled out him by mistake changing filament from 1.75 to 2.75. So the only alternative solution with me just seeing photos was that there is a there is a jam. There is a, a clog in the nozzle. So I explained to him what to do. Uh, I gave him some nylon filament to clean out the nozzle, um, and that didn't work. So what happened then is he posted it onto Facebook, and the same things, the same replies were being given to him. You have a jam. You have a jam. So he called me up, and I kind of tried to explain to him to check whether it's coming from the extruder. Maybe it's the pneumatic coupler of the uh, PTFE tube. And unfortunately, he couldn't understand anything I was saying. <laughs> Granted, starter in 3D printing, I completely understand. So I told him, let me come over. So I went over to his place, and the first thing I noticed was this. As you can see, the hub gear actually fell. Um, the, the, it wasn't tightened with the grub screws and it kind of fell so it wasn't pushing filament through so it was a very very easy fix. So I kind of fixed it for him and now he's printing and he's happy but it kind of it kind of made me think because I go through the 3D printing group on Facebook quite a lot and I see people having issues and I noticed quite a few things. First of all, a lot of people are very new to 3D printing and I completely understand that it's very hard to grasp the concept of the terminology people like us, people who are experienced, use. Um, second is that when a lot of people post questions about issues they're having, they give very, very little information what the issue is, usually just post pictures, what's happening. So I, I have no idea, you have to be, you know, a video maybe, something. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna to try to help people through these videos by answering questions which we're posting on 3D printing groups on Facebook. By going through the issue, going through pictures, um, going through the, the description that was given and give my input on what I think is actually wrong. So the first issue here is from Jay and he says, having issue with a new printer, PowerSpec i3 mini with warping and the prints are flecking. So I'm guessing it's flaking maybe. Um, could that be an issue with temperature or maybe bad filament? Any tips would be greatly appreciated. Now, the first thing in this case you would need to do is specify what filament you're using, what temperature you're using on the hot end and what temperature you're using on the heat bed. From these photos, from what I can see, is that that's literally warping because there is not enough heat on the bed. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that that is PEG um, because that's what it usually looks like when it's not hot enough. When you're printing PEG too cool, it literally looks like it's, it's well, I guess flaking. That's what he was saying. So if you're printing with PEG, make sure you have a high enough bed temperature. Usually 70 degrees should do it. Um, for hot end temperatures, make sure you have it uh, at least around 240. Um, that's usually the mid range for, for PEG. The other thing I noticed here is that I can see that the nozzle fan is, or uh, the hot end fan has like a big gap here at the bottom. So that's possibly cooling the filament as well too quickly. And with PEG, you should always use like maybe 40, from 40 to 60% fan speed. Next issue is from Isaac Miller and he's pointing out this issue here. What he says is, is that a printer issue or a Quora issue? Every time I do circles, it does this. Sometimes it actually seems to hit it and then lift the first layer if I'm not lucky. So the first thing I notice here is the bed is definitely not level. Second thing is that issue, what he is referring to is these sides here. 
Um, as you can see, it's lifting slightly. So that happens when your nozzle is too close to the bed. So the way it happens is, so let's, let's, let's try it this way. So what happens is, so you, you have your nozzle. It's actually not a bad drawing. So, but you can't see anything. So this is what happens. So you have your nozzle. Okay, which extrudes filament. Now, if the bed is too far off, your filament will kind of look like this. There's just, it's not connecting to anything, which is why you see separate strands. However, if, ugh, if you're too close, what's happening is that the printer is trying to push a preset amount of filament and there's not enough space between the nozzle and the bed. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna push it out the side here. And this is what your layer is gonna look like. And what's gonna happen next is as soon as it goes here on the side, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna push that filament to the side and this to the side and always pushing up. And then it starts curling upwards. So that is why it happens. So that issue is your nozzle is close to the bed, too close to the bed. So next issue is from Casper. He goes, okay, here is my issue. When I start printing my extruder, it doesn't push filament right, but it starts slide on it and grind it. After a few minutes, stop extruding at all. It's not a nozzle problem because hand extruding works and nozzle is not clogging. So looking at this video, um, what I can tell you is it seems like that's a bit too fast. Um, the extruder is turning way too quickly. So I wouldn't be surprised if the nozzle is just not hot enough to actually handle um, that speed. So you either need to really dial up the heat on your nozzle or slow down the extrusion because that's definitely way too fast visually. I can see it from here. Next thing. So this, this is two, there are two people uh, complaining here about an issue they are having. So this is the first one and he asks whether or not he can fix this issue. And I'm not exactly sure what he's referring to because there's literally just that. Any tips on how I can fix this issue? Um, there are a few issues that I can see here. First of all, you can see the infill, meaning that there are not enough perimeters on the print. Um, secondly, I'm seeing these gaps and they're a bit weird. Um, it, it feels like under extrusion because they're quite sporadic. However, when you go here, you can see this. This seems like his seam, his start and stop seam is aligned. And the fact that they all happen right at the beginning um, tells me that that is lacking extra restart distance um, in, in priming. So, so that could be one of two things because this is the seam. This is where the start and stop. Now, depending on how the uh, the printer was printing this, whether it was clockwise or anti-clockwise, can be two different things. If it was anti-clockwise and the printer was going this direction and stopping here, it means that it's not extruding enough filament on the start of the layer. And that is one of the features that Simplify 3D has, which is extra restart distance. If it's going clockwise, then that is a coasting issue, which means that he has too much coasting and the filament is being stopped from coming out way before. Coasting is when you tell the extruder to stop extruding filament before you stop the layer. And the reason why you do that is when you have a Bowden setup, because you have quite a bit of pressure in the uh, PTFE tube. And even if you stop extruding, there's always gonna be a few millimeters that are gonna ooze out. So you give it a coasting um, uh, distance, usually 0 0.2, 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, that could either be too much coasting or, um, or not enough extra star distance. Once again, my impression of this. Now this, this is the second one. So once again, what's the problem here? At least he shows where the problem is. And once again, same, very similar lines. Now, a lot of people have told him that it's humidity. Now, if this was humidity, it would be everywhere. However, it's only starting on this seam here, which is, I think, where his start and stop um, parameters are. And it's the it's, it's same as the other one. It starts and stops in the same place. So it could either be a coasting issue or an extra restart distance. Once again, that those are the first things that I would look into. Ideally, there would be a video so you can see exactly what is happening because just a photo 
might not be enough. And finally, um, I, I picked this up because I actually, this happened to me once. It happened to me on the Alpha YZ10. And what happened is um, Jake here printed this, this uh, calibration cube on the right here and printed fine, almost fine. But the day after he printed again and it was much shorter and there's there's all kinds of things to adjust the potentiometers of the drivers uh it's skipping steps on the z-axis possible however the one thing that i would suggest the first thing i would suggest to do is make sure you don't have any binding on your z-axis what happened on the alpha yz10 was that um, the scroll wheels or the wheels that would guide the rail up and down were a bit too tight and they were binding and it was also affecting the stepper motor couplers on the z-axis rods so the first thing the first first thing is make sure it's not binding um, make sure there's a bit of slack undo the the screws that hold on to the wheels make sure they're not too tight and try again that doesn't solve the issue then start looking at your potentiometers to make sure that enough voltage is going into the uh the stepper motors so this is my idea um to help people with questions now i do have a facebook page which i have to be honest i haven't used or updated on it for quite some time i, and I apologize to anyone who's who's there um but i intend to so if you guys uh, have any issues, um, you can post them on 3D printing forums, of course, absolutely, you get a lot of help. The only problem is that sometimes when you ask questions which a lot of people feel are stupid because they know their stuff and you're brand new, you get a lot of trolls, you get a lot of people sort of like uh, shaming you for not knowing that and that's not the way to help people. So, if you have any questions which you cannot find the answers to, I invite you to post them on my Facebook page and I will include them in the next episode of the series. Well, if this turns out to be a good enough series that people want to watch. That is it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. And as always, happy making, guys.